morning, church. We invite you to come on in, stand up with us. We're going to enter this time in worship together and sing some songs. the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you holy there is 
turns morning into dancing. Our God's a God of miracles. You turn morning to dancing. Come on. You give beauty for ashes. Yes, it does. You turn shame. Community Church. If that didn't wake you up, I'm not sure what will. Amen. Welcome. We are glad you're here to worship with us. If you're new here, we would love the opportunity to give you any information that, or ask, answer any questions that you have about us. Um, if you have anything or if you'd like to know anything more about us, there is a connect card um, on your way out on the big big door or big, big backdrop thing to the right of the door. Um, just grab one of those, fill it out, drop it in the wicker basket that's at the, the back of the lobby. Um, and we would love to reach out to you and give you any, any information that you have about us. Um, yeah. So I think that's everything that I was supposed to say for that. You know, I say this literally every Sunday. You think I would know after a while, but oh well. Uh, hey, why don't we open this morning in prayer? Heavenly Father, you turn graves into gardens. There is nothing better than you. What a privilege it is to come and to remind each other again as your people just how true that is, Lord. Father, I pray that this morning you would give us ears to hear as you speak to us, your people. Um, I especially pray for Jim as he gets to deliver our message this morning. What an awesome opportunity. I pray that you fill him with your spirit so that you might fill all of us with your spirit and then send us out into this community. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated as we turn to God's word. This morning, our scripture passage is going to come to us from the book of Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 through 35. Luke 14, 25 through 35. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. 
won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It's thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the word of the Lord for us this morning, and a, and a, and a tough one. I'm, I, I'm glad I'm not preaching it. <laughs> um, but I have the extreme pleasure of introducing Jim Clockow. Jim is one of our elders here. He is the head of our stewardship team. Um, and if, you ha- if you've had the opportunity to have a conversation with Jim in the last two years, you know probably two things. One, he is passionate about Jesus. And two, he's passionate about this church. So I am especially excited to hear Jim come up here and share with us God's word and how we can be better disciples. Welcome, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Micah. You know, I need to hire Micah and Jill as my spokespeople because they've been so great this past week. And I know not all of you knew I was preaching today, but they've been giving me encouragement and prayers and that means so much to me. So thank you. So we'll talk after service and we'll drop some contracts and things. My name is Jim Clocko, and I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Do you? The last few years, starting December 1st, 2017 to be exact, God has led me on a journey of discovery. Discovery about myself, my future, and my relationship with him. He's been asking me to follow him, to trust in him, to wait for him, and to be ready, ready for change. Waiting for God can be a long and many times scary process. How many of you have ever gone fishing? How about fishing with kids? The Clacko clan was on vacation a few weeks ago, and we spent several days fishing. We were fortunate. We caught some fish. Sometimes, though, that is not always the case. How many of you have gone all day without any bites, let alone fish? For those of us fishing with kids, how many have heard, Dad, Mom, I need bait. Dad, Mom, my line is tangled. Dad, Mom, I'm stuck. Dad, Mom, how come we're not catching any fish? Dad, Mom, I'm bored. Dad, Mom, the bugs are bothering me. Hearing these problems, all of them, got me thinking. I wonder how God feels when we constantly call on him with our problems. I was flustered and exhausted with three kids. How about billions of people? But God wants us to call out to him. He loves to hear our prayers and petitions. And what does he want from us? God wants us to know him. And we can only know him through Jesus. He wants a real relationship. And when we are in a real relationship with him, our heart changes. Out of that relationship and heart change, our actions flow. Our behavior, mindset, and lifestyle changes. When we abide in him, we are better able to shine his light and love others the way he wants us to. We become a disciple of Christ. Most of us here today in person or watching on the live stream would probably admit that they want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. But what does that mean? I bet society has a very different definition of discipleship than Jesus does. When Steve asked me if I'd be willing to share a message, I immediately started praying and asking God what he wanted to put on my heart to talk about. The one topic that kept coming up was discipleship. As the stewardship team has been meeting, we have been discussing what stewardship means, how we have done it here at PCC, and how we move forward with it. As I have been praying about stewardship, the one thing that has constantly been on my heart is the role of discipleship with stewardship. More specifically, being a disciple of Jesus Christ. What is it? What does it entail? How do we become disciples? And the real tough question, am I a disciple? Do I truly act 
like a disciple? Or do I do and say all the right things, but in my heart, I am not a disciple at all? Christ. I've got 20 minutes or so to talk about something. Sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. John 13, 34 through 35. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. <clears throat> Self-evaluation is hard, especially if it is done honestly. It's hard to take an honest look at yourself and admit your shortcomings. Our society doesn't promote that. We promote a feel-good mentality. Is something not going right for you? It's someone else's fault, not your own. In order to grow as a disciple of Jesus, though, I believe that we must do our self-evaluation in total honesty, embrace our weaknesses, our shortcomings, our faults, and take them to God, trusting and depending on Him. Contrary to what the world tells us, weakness can be a tremendous source of strength when we allow God to meet us there. I do know one thing that is easy to figure out. I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want to follow Jesus in everything I do. I want to share the love that Jesus Christ has shown me with everyone, everywhere, every time. Do I? Uh-oh, here's that time for that tough self-evaluation. If being a disciple of Christ is mostly being a good person, helping out the people we want to help out, and mostly following Jesus, then I'm good. But it is so much more than this. A true disciple has a love for the Word of God. A true disciple loves to hear and heed the Word of God in their lives and are able to rejoice in all things. A true disciple has a lasting commitment to Christ. They are not just involved, but are committed to take up their cross and follow Jesus to the very end no matter the cost. A true disciple has a longing to know Christ. A true disciple will spend time to intimately know Jesus. A true disciple is a leader of others to Christ. They will seek out family, friends, and neighbors to tell them the good news and bring them to Jesus. Wow, after reading this, I'm in big trouble. Friends, I'm a sinner. I fall way short of Jesus' command to be his disciple. For those of us with kids, do you remember teaching them to ride a bicycle? We would run along the bike, holding onto the back seat before letting go and letting our kids ride freely. But inevitably, what would happen? Our kids would fall off their bike. And what did we tell them to do? Get right back up and get right back on that bike. That's where I am on my discipleship journey. I fall off my bike constantly. And Jesus, our loving Father, is right there picking me up and telling me to get right back on my bike. So where do we start? As I have been wrestling with discipleship and trying to become a better disciple myself, my thoughts seem to come back to helping others, sharing how God has moved in my life, admitting I make a ton of mistakes, understanding and loving the fact that we're all a bunch of messed up people, knowing that it is not about me, loving others, and most importantly, knowing I need Jesus in my life. As I look back at my journey, a turning point for me was when I became involved with the church, whether it was volunteering, serving, or simply coming. I wasn't a bad person before, but I can tell you that I was not on any kind of disciple-making path. When I started coming to church, I started to be a witness to how others who were further along their disciple journey, lived their life. I realized that without Jesus Christ, I am nothing. I cannot do the things I do without my Father in my life. He needs to be at the forefront of everything I do. I realized that I needed to turn it over to Him. I needed to be a student of Jesus Christ. I needed to internally change my heart. When I started to let Jesus into my heart, He started to work on me. I was able to stay on my bike for longer stretches. I felt like a weight had been lifted off of me. 
This wasn't and still isn't easy, my friends. As I said earlier, I make a ton of mistakes. I get angry with my family, short-tempered with my kids, say things I regret as soon as they come out of my big mouth. The list goes on and on. God, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. As I have become better at giving my life to Jesus, I can feel the Holy Spirit working in me. I am open to letting God use me and use me in ways I never would have thought he would. I became even more involved with PCC. I stepped into leadership roles within the church. I've joined small groups where we enter into relationships with others on their journey. I was asked to become a Stephen minister, a side plug for Stephen ministry. This is a wonderful program of one-on-one -on -one caring ministry where as a caregiver, we walk alongside others who are in need of the ultimate cure giver, Jesus Christ. Being a Stephen minister has taught me humility, love, compassion, and the ability to shut up and listen, which my family likes that one. I became more bold in my conversations with my clients, bold to express my faith, to share my faith, and to pray for my clients. I still cared about doing their taxes, but it became so much more than some dumb numbers on a form that no one understands. I started to be in prayer more, to listen to God, and to try and follow him. I started to read the Bible more, to be in his word, to meditate and absorb his words to us. As I look back over the last 10 years or so of my life, I see how my journey has taken shape. It's been transformative for me. If I'm honest, though, I still struggle with all of this. The evil one enters my mind and wants to push me off my bike. I don't read the Bible enough. I don't spend enough time in prayer or simple silence with God. I still get angry with people. Love them all the time? Forget it. Have you ever driven down I-294 and I-290 in rush hour, God? I keep myself too busy, not enough time, too many activities. But friends, don't be discouraged. God doesn't reject me when I fail. His constant acceptance frees me to continue to follow him. Romans 3, 23 through 24 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. I will tell you that I am a much better disciple today than I was 10 years ago, but I still have a long way to go. I still need to completely trust Jesus and take up my cross and follow him every day. Have there been disappointments, struggles, heartaches, and pain along the way? Absolutely. There is no magic formula to discipleship. It's hard work. It takes effort, energy, strength, trust, and prayer, to name a few. You must keep pushing. Author Eric Russ defines discipleship as pouring into others, pouring into others, training them in word, in relationship, and in ministry so that they might develop as healthy believers who can walk by faith, share their faith, and multiply their faith. Everyone is at a different point in their discipleship journey. Some of you may be just beginning, wondering who this Jesus guy was and what he did. Some of you may have already opened up your heart a bit to him, maybe just a little, but you've opened the door to that heart change. Some of you might be full-blown disciples, willing to do anything or go anywhere God leads you. Some of you may be somewhere in between. Wherever you are in this journey, it's okay, as long as you're on the journey. Discipleship is a lifelong process that evolves and never ends. I've had many amazing journeys in my faith life, stories of how God has shown up. I've also had many missed opportunities, times when God opened the door, but I didn't or maybe wasn't willing to walk through. I remember times when I didn't act. It was scary to act or easier just to leave things the way they are. Change is difficult and the road unknown can be extremely terrifying. I can remember looking back at those times and saying to myself, I wish I would have gone down that road, or I wonder what my life would look like if I had done that. As my discipleship path has evolved over the years, I've started to venture down some of these roads. The problem is that God's timing is very different than ours. 
we get stagnant or feel like God is not moving any longer, or we wonder, what is taking him so long? Can you move a bit faster here, God? I want to go back to that date, December 1st, 2017, that I mentioned earlier. I want to share with you a recent time in my life when I truly felt God leading me. A time when in the past, before I started on my disciple journey, I would have thrown in the towel and quit. A time when I held up my hand and let God direct me on where to go. Most of you probably know that I used to own my own business, a tax and accounting practice. I was self-employed for 21 years. On December 1st, 2017, God started me on a journey. I had no plans to sell my business and go anywhere else, but God had some other plans for me. In the past, I would have handled this on my own. I got it. No worries. But not now. Use me, God. Take me wherever it is you want to take me. I'll share the condensed version with you because it's a long story. So hang in there with me as there are some ups and downs along the way. But after securing another form of employment as a CFO for a privately held company, I was all set to find a buyer. In the fall of 2018, I found that buyer, or so I thought. We'll call him buyer number one. As my original exit date of December 31st, 2018 rolled past, I had a fallback plan out by July 1st, 2019. Same buyer, same job, all is good. I trudged through another 80 hour a week tax season in 2019, knowing that by July 1st, I would be out. Then in May, 2019, buyer one backed out. Then I lost the CFO job. Wow, what a punch in the gut this was. I was so looking forward to getting out. The seed had been planted. I felt God leading me somewhere, but where? I found another buyer. We'll call him buyer two. And you know the story is tough when you have multiple buyers here. But I found another buyer in June of 2019, but now had no job. Okay, God, where are we going here? I even received a letter of intent from this new buyer. Great, now I'll sell and have no job to go to. Early retirement? Eh, three kids, college, yeah, I don't think so. Guess what, though? God provided another job for me. A phone call to a friend asking if he knew of anything led to a job offer. In all honesty, a better option than the original CFO position. When one door closes, another one opens. Okay, I'm all set. Job, good. Buyer, good. Even though I wasn't going to be out by July 1st, at least I was on my way. Or so I thought. Then one day in early July, I received an email from buyer two. Uh-oh. Do you ever just stare at an email without opening it and wonder what it is going to say? I had to click on it and open it. I'm taking back my letter of intent. Here we go again. I have a job and no buyer. No. A few weeks later, I contacted my first buyer who backed out in May. I was desperate and had no one else to turn to. He said yes, again, but I had a bad feeling about this. After quite a bit of back and forth in October, he backs out again. So here it is, October 2019. My job is lined up, but I still can't find that elusive buyer. Plus, time is running out as we're getting closer to yet another tax season. What are you doing, God? I need you. God was there for me. I went back to buyer two who had sent me the letter of intent. Can you help me? He did. We agreed on terms, and by the end of November 2019, everything was finally set for the sale to happen in early 2020. God was amazingly good to me, just like he has been before. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. His plan, not my plan, his are these plans easy? No. But will he harm us? He will give us hope in a future. I don't deserve this, Lord. Why are you so good to me? And all you want is my heart? Did I wish my journey could have been a bit shorter with less uncertainty along the way? Absolutely. But God and his plans for me are amazing. If this journey doesn't go at his pace, 
I may not have ended up where I did because the journey ended very, very differently from where it started. As I look back on this journey, I realize that it could have only been weaved by God and his amazing love for me. God gives us glimpses of his awesome splendor all the time. We just need to be open to seeing them. I witnessed one when it came time to finally tell my kids about my job journey. For the whole journey, I told no one but my wife, Melissa. I thought that was probably the smart thing to do. Plus, I needed her by my side. I'll never forget. We were at home having dinner one night in November of 2019. Only Katie, my oldest, and Lucas, my youngest, were there. Alex, my middle guy, was on an overnight camping trip with scouts. Kids, Dad has something to share, is how I started the story. I shared the whole amazing journey. When I was done, Katie, who had just started high school a few months before, looked at me and said, Wow, Dad, that's kind of like my journey and where I should go to high school. I never thought Marist High School, but I felt something in my heart telling me to go there. How awesome it was to hear that. That's the Holy Spirit in your heart, honey. Thank you, God. Lucas asked me, Dad, are you still going to get paid? Okay, not quite what I was hoping for, but brutally honest. I can't go wrong with that. I got my chance to talk with my son Alex the next day. After sharing the whole amazing journey with him, Alex looked at me and asked, Dad, are you okay? Is there anything wrong? Then he got a bit emotional. Not at all what I was expecting, but so appreciative for his love and concern for me the kind of love and concern we get from our Heavenly Father. How awesome was this? Pastor Jeffrey Brandt wrote an article that discusses the blessings for the true disciple. The article listed many blessings. I won't share all of them with you, but I wanted to share a few since they are so powerful. Direction. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Strength. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Peace. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Power. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and will do even greater things than these. Relationship. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. As we open our hearts to Jesus and enter into a real relationship with him, our hearts will change. We will begin to pour into others so that they may grow in their faith, trust, and love for Jesus Christ. We will focus less on ourselves and the confines of this building and go. Go to those who do not know Jesus. We become true disciples of Christ. I want to share a video I found that captures the essence of discipleship.
The rewards of true discipleship are immeasurable and invaluable. The result is a life that is no longer conformed to the ways of this world, but transformed to the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. The disciple becomes the light of the world and the salt of the earth because Jesus Christ is Lord of that person's life. I've been a member of PCC for over 20 years now, and I am so excited about how God is moving among us here in this place. I see exciting growth and opportunity for his church right here in Palos Park. Just what is this growth and opportunity, you ask? I don't know, and I don't need to know. All I need to do is hold out my hand and say, God, lead me. Lead me wherever you need to lead me to. Is that going to be easy? No way. Is it going to involve difficult decisions and actions? You bet. I don't know any of the answers to any of these questions. All I do know is that I've let God take my hand and lead me on his journey. It was scary, difficult, full of unknowns, longer than I wanted, but it was one of the most amazing journeys of my life so far. So far, because he is not finished with me yet. Friends, let us all hold out our hands and let the master lead us. We will be in for the journey of our lives. My name is Jim Clocko, and I want to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Will you join me? Let's pray. Oh, Father God, we want to be your true disciples. Help us. Help us to follow you, not just on Sunday, but every day of our lives. Lord, you bless us in so many ways. You are so good to us, and all you want from us is a relationship, a real relationship where we give you our all, our everything. Help us to be more open to letting you into our hearts, to change us, to transform us into real disciples, disciples that will go as you commanded us to do and bring others to you. Keep us strong as we follow you, no matter the price. I pray for your church here in Palos Park. I pray for the leaders as they discern your will for us. Keep our hearts and minds open to your call. It's not about what we want. It's all about you. Give us the courage and boldness to follow you, no matter how difficult that will be. You have overcome the world, Lord. Help us to do the same for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jim, for sharing your story and for reminding us of Jesus' invitation to each one of us to live as his disciples. And one of the ways that we do that is by giving back. So as we prepare to uh, dedicate our offering and pray a prayer of thanksgiving, um, we just want to let you know that there's a basket in the lobby if you wish to give an offering this morning. Uh, or you can give online or by direct mail to the church office. But our offerings are more than just our resources. Let us take this time to offer our hearts and our lives back to Jesus as we pray. Will you pray with me? Oh, Lord, your love is a firm foundation. We can trust in you even when living for you seems sometimes hard. There is none like you. And what good news, Lord, that you are not finished with us yet. So, Lord, we give back to you in grateful thanksgiving from all that you have given. Lord, in the upside-down world of your gospel, we measure our wealth not by what we have, by, but by what we give away. So let us give, help us, Lord, give generously in this morning's offering and our comings and goings this week in our own communities and with the people that we meet, Lord, in all that we do to bless your church, your people, and your creation. And we just thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We invite you all to stand up with us as we enter this next song. Uh, my prayer for us is that this would be more than just a song and that we would truly feel this in our heart because all we need is God.
Oh, no. 
two announcements for us this morning, but they're really exciting. The first one is we are doing something different this summer. We are offering a four-week session of small groups. There are four different times throughout the weeks that you can attend, but we are all studying the same thing, which will be biblical themes uh, based from the Bible Project uh, curriculum. So we're really excited about this. Check out the website for more information. There's also a little flyer in the lobby if you would like to have one in your hand. Um, so we're looking forward to that. That's going to be a, a really exciting time of gathering this summer. Also, this is the really exciting one. Because of all of your generosity, we have 72 bags and boxes to decorate in Fellowship Hall immediately following this service for Together We Rise. This is, going to, this is just such good news. So join us downstairs to decorate and have fun. And let us close with song. to give you hope and a future. Hold out your hand and trust in him. Let God lead you. Start becoming a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.